Yeah, we're going to be working on it. Yeah, we're going to be working on it. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, my feeling is I am ready for spring break. And we have to wait until all the way till next week. So I would like to have a preliminary spring break and then a second spring break, the regular spring break. But unfortunately, that's not possible. So what we're going to have to do today, and on account of being two minutes late, we're going to have to dismiss a little bit early today. All right. If that's now, raise your hand if you're against that. Okay. Well, let's keep going. I, I want to talk about the homework. And I'm going to try to actually go back a couple assignments to number six. This little shrimpy kid at the ice rink. And that was a brain burner for many of you. And this is the one that we're going to focus on today. Now, um, last time I showed you the distance triangle method to, or not, not last time, but a couple uh, lectures ago. Um, this one, it was uh, lecture 14 last Thursday, a week ago. Uh, remember we did that? And we used the impulse formula, F delta T equals delta P, and we figured out the stopping time, and then we made a distance triangle and figured out, you know, the distance triangle. And so we did that last time, and if you want to review that, it's perfectly uh, righteous to use that method to figure out the stopping distance of the shrimpy little kid on the brain burner of homework six. But I'm going to show you how to use kinetic energy and work today to give you an easier way to calculate it, to calculate any stopping distance. And going over this, we're going to bring it all together. All right? And I'm going to try to make it even consistent and harmonious or rhyming with Einstein's theory of relativity, four-dimensional space-time. Um, now, homework eight, I gave you some practice with, practice with basic work concepts. All right, I had you calculate a couple, you know, Brett Favor and C.C. Sabathia, kinetic energy. And it's amazing, Brett Favor has a lot more kinetic energy on his heater. It's true. I mean, it's good. the guy's, I don't even want to think about what he would do if he was a baseball pitcher. Oh, my God. Oops. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they'd be the Chuck Norris of Major League Baseball. But anyways, these equations up here are the ones that we talked about in my cursor. Uh, the definition of kinetic energy, one half mv squared. The definition of gravitational potential energy, minus mg delta y. So this works if you're increasing your elevation, delta y positive, or if you're decreasing your, if you're dropping, delta y negative. You know, either way it works. And, uh, and then down here, the conservation of total mechanical energy. All right, that number, capital E, it's a number of joules. And if you figure it out at any altitude, you've got the same value at any other altitude you may care to calculate it at. And that is how to calculate the brain burner table from homework eight. All right, now... Uh, what we're going to do is talk about potential energy, kinetic energy a little bit, and mostly we're going to be talking about work. And um, when we uh, work on this uh, shrimpy little kid at the skating rink, I'm going to show you how to calculate a stopping distance without having to do stopping time. You don't have to use impulse formula. You just use the work formula. This one right up here, F delta X equals uh, delta KE, right, the change in the kinetic energy. So let's attack the ice skater problem in iClicker. Get your iClicker turned on. Frequency D. 
And uh, what we're going we're gonna to do, first of all, we're going to trot through the specs. So first thing we're going to do for the shrimpy little uh, kid at the ice skating rink, we're going to calculate momentum states. Now, this is not having to do with the stopping time, but let's just get it in, get the basic specs down, uh, and then we'll get to the kinetic energy. Okay, calculate his initial momentum. And this is from uh, a preview that I made for the shrimpy little kid problem. Uh, what the? Oh, I got stuff. Uh, so the shrimpy little kid problem that I had, three, 34 kilograms, initial speed 5.5. So we'll go ahead and make a note of that. That's the, the specs that we're going to use. And also, you can't really see it very good. It's down here, and it was on the other slide. The frictional force, 19.0 meters, or excuse me, 19.0 newtons of friction. All right, so calculate, but calculate his momentum and make a vote. And I'll give you a minute or so to do that. And hopefully, you know, moment. So we got to be able to do this, you know, in our, in our sleep. Calculate momentum states. Calculate kinetic energy states. You know, and just you know, without even hesitation. You, now we're not going to use kinetic or, or uh, momentum here in this problem for the shrimpy little ice skater, but. Let me get this picture out of the way. So there's your alternatives. How many we got here? Okay, 20 seconds. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, uh, yeah, most of you got it right. Uh, the option B is correct. Let's, let's calculate it out. A few of you got tripped up. Uh, P equals MV, that's the definition of momentum. And you're gonna know this one by heart. You won't even have to memorize it because you've used it so many times. Okay, in this particular instance, it's 34 kilograms times 5.5 meters per second. Now, you may have had an, a, um, an instance of the shrimpy little kid at the skating rink uh, with a different mass and a different speed. That's all right. The strategy is the same if you're calculating momentum. All right, so there's his momentum. And option B is the correct answer. All right. Any questions about this? I want to make sure we go step by step and nobody gets tripped up. All right, let's keep going. Question number two. talk this one over. The shrimpy little kid at the skating rink, we're, we're, we're working towards calculating his stopping distance. La, 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 la. See what I said about <laughs> Uh, 
All right. Uh, 20 seconds to vote. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, we're going to show this one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Go ahead, put it in full screen. Yeah, right there. All right, now we got a, a little bit of um, an argumentation going on here between options A and B. Go ahead back. So let's, let's settle this once and for all. Uh, the correct answer is A. And the reason for that is it is stopped. Since she. So if you got, tri if you got tricked, uh, as 36% of you did with option B, you just got caught napping. Now I'm not going to ask you a show of hands of who got caught napping. But I did catch a nap. So now, uh, if we wanted to calculate delta p, we could do that now. Zero minus one eighty-seven. Right now, we don't really need it. It's good. We've got it, and we're just trotting through the specs. A little bit of extra practice. You know, and who knows? You know, the next time we we face the shrimpy little kid at the ice skating rink. Uh, we might need to know is delta P. You know, we're calculating a force or something like that, All right? Uh, but what we really want to do in this exercise, we're not going to do the distance triangle. We're going to calculate the work. And to calculate the work, we need to change, we need to calculate the change in the kinetic energy. So let's get to it. Question number three. The shrimpy little kid's mass is 34 kilograms. His initial speed is... 5.5 meters per second. Calculate his, his initial kinetic energy. Yeah, I can hear people and I see people page it back in their notes. Yeah, look at the uh, formula for kinetic energy. Talked about it last time. It was on the screen just a few minutes ago. And it was in the prep. It was in the instruction page for homework eight, so. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals one half. One half of. Read carefully. Read carefully. You know, a week from now, we're going to have exam two. And if you do not read carefully on exam two, you are going to get, and I don't care if you're an engineering major or any other kind of major, uh, you're going to get caught napping. So do not let me catch you napping. Read carefully. Because I can see evidence of, we're gonna, we're gonna show. Hello? Joan, Joan, lovely one. I'm in the middle of lecture. No, okay, bye bye. That went into the podcast. Yes. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, all right. So what are we doing here? Okay. Uh, Ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We're not going to display it. Go ahead. Uh, okay, the answer is uh, E, and uh, you know what? I caught a, a few of you napping, 35 of you, uh, about 26% of the clicks, um, with, B, with D. 
Uh, and that's why I said, read carefully. That's a nice number, 514.25, but that's a momentum. All right? That's not a, that's not a kinetic energy. So let's look at this. All right? Ke equals one half mv squared. All right, so here we go. We'll plug it in, um, the definition, and uh, 0 0.5 out in front, and then his mass, 34 kilograms, and then 5.5 quantity squared. All right, so you have to square that. Now, what I normally do is I just calculate everything together on my calculator. And if you can do that, that's great. But um, to describe it in terms of like something that you write down on the page, uh, what you would do here or what I would do is the first two parentheses combine them together into 17 kilograms. And then the third parentheses with the square outside of it, I'd square it. And now I have 5.5 uh, squared, that's 30.25. And then the units, though, here, those also get squared. So you have meters squared per second squared, all right? And now you can multiply those two together. Now, I want you to write that down in your notes. And even if you got it right, because I want to emphasize something here. All right, so that's equal. There's your kinetic energy. And that's option E. 514.25 kilogram meters squared per second squared. Now I want you to write down that that's also equal to 514.25 joules. Symbol is capital J. And by the way, Joule is the name of an English scientist who figured out a, a lot of energy work and thermodynamics concepts. And so the unit, the metric unit, or one of the metric units of work is uh, named after him. A pretty interesting guy. Now that is equivalent to 514.25 Newton meters. All right. So um, I want you to write all three of those down, even if you got it right, so that you can remember the occasional time when one of those three forms will be conducive to cancellation in some other calculation following this. And we do have a calculation following this because we're not done yet. We just got the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy here. But what we want to do is figure out a stopping distance. So this is just one of the parts that goes in. And we're trying to bring it all together and you know get this stuff squared away. All right, now let's do another calculation. Let's see if I could catch you guys napping on this or not. Final kinetic energy. La 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 la. Lo 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 lo. No, 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 no. Okay, 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ah, uh, geniuses, you guys, whew, you really got it. And as, as with the, the, the other question, yeah, it's a zero because it's, or as we say in the business, it's goose egg time uh, because he stopped. It's a stopping distance problem. So the, the final momentum state is zero. The final kinetic energy state is zero because the little shrimpy kid has come to a stop after so many meters. Now, I want to point something out to you about this. 
The distinctions in this set of five answers is in the units. Now, you may have a, a tougher problem on exam two, but if you look carefully at the units, you'll be able to eliminate maybe one or two, maybe two or three, and then make an educated guess on the answer. So let's take a look at the wrong answers on this one. First one, up here, yeah, that's no good. It's a, it's a nice uh, answer for a different question maybe. That's a zero momentum, kilogram meters per second. You know, every, every numeric part is all the same. Because I knew you guys would know that it's a zero, but did you get the right units? So and you did. So that's momentum up there. That's the answer for the two questions ago. Um, this one, zero kilogram meters per second squared. That's a force. That's a Newton. Zero Newtons. So that's out. I mean, if you're asking about kinetic energy state, this is not the right answer. You know, that might be the answer for something like with Newton's second law or something, but not for this. Okay, the next one, D, that's a speed, all right? If I'm asking you about a speed, you know, what is this speed? What is this final speed? Zero, that would be, but that's not the question I'm asking. All right, so you, remember, you always wanna read carefully. Do not let me catch you napping. And this last one is a little bit trickier because you know, nobody goes around asking, well, what's the V squared of the rabbit? Or what's the V squared of the satellite? But V squared is used in, in a calculation. So, you know, it is tempting. But that's what this is. It's V squared. It's not, it's not kinetic energy. It's not kilogram meters per second squared per second squared. It's just a V squared. All right. Um, so... The initial kinetic energy was 514.25 uh, newton meters. The final, or the initial, no, the final, wait a minute, let me, let me state this back up. The initial was 514.25 joules. The final zero. So delta Ke, which we need for the work formula. Now we've got it. All right. We've done a couple, three subcalculations here, and we're, we're trying to get everything organized here and go step by step. And hey, you guys that you know posted in discussions, no, oh, I feel lost and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm trying to go step by step here. I'm not mocking you at all. I know, you know, it's legitimate for you to say stuff like that when it's, when it's legitimate. And I'm not mocking you, but I, what, I, what I am trying to emphasize is I try to go step by step. Um, and so the kids that have been in calculus and stuff, this looks really cinchy. But for, I know for some of you, you want to go step by step, and that, that helps, if, especially if you're not on your phone. Okay. I wasn't looking at anybody except one person in the front row. So let's use the work form. Now, this is where we get delta X. That delta X, you know, we got delta KE there, and the delta X there, that's going to be our stopping distance. All right? Now, we're going to, let me bring it up to the top here. All right? And let's just start putting in stuff that we know. Now, we already know delta Ke. We just figured that out. It's negative 514.25. So that goes in over here on the right. All right? And if I give you a homework problem over the weekend, you'll know how to figure this out and fill out this side. All right, now over here on the left side, F delta X. Now, this one's a little bit subtle. I have a minus sign in there. Okay? I have a minus sign on the right because the object has slowed down. In fact, it's slowed down to a stop, all right? So his delta Ke is negatory. He's losing kinetic energy. And so that's why I have a minus sign over there. Now, why don't I have this one over here? Well, the reason I put a minus sign there is because I, I, I haven't done anything with coordinates, but we're doing it now, all right? We're saying that the little shrimpy kid is moving to the right initially, all right? 
uh, 5.5 meters per second. All right. And his delta x is from, you know, x equals 0 to x equals something. Positive. So we're saying that he's got a rightward delta x. All right. And that being the case, the friction force that slows him down has to be the opposite direction. All right? So make a note of that. If, if you decide that you're, you know, we, we didn't make any sketches, and there was a little photo of a shrimpy little kid, but he wasn't sliding on the surface of the ice rink, so you didn't really have a direction. But now we can think about it. If you want to make a sketch, you know, you could have a little, you know, a little dot you know, to represent the center of mass of the little kid, you know, at, at time t equals zero and time t equals final, you know, to represent on the x-axis, and that would represent the motion. Question over here. In the, in the problem itself, the, the friction force was given. He, he, your uncle runs the, I think it goes like this, your uncle runs the ice skating rink, so you know that the friction is 19.0. But now that I'm putting in explicit directionality, I have to put a minus sign under the assumption that the, the little kid is going to the right. Okay? Now, if he was going to the left, the friction force would be positive and delta x would be a negative number. Okay? You know, so that'd be all right. We could figure, you know, we could handle that too. All right? Uh, question. What happens to the delta that's supposed to be times? Here? And also the other one. This one? Yeah. That's a delta of the stuff inside the parentheses. Okay, so that's delta KE. All right. And that's this number of uh, Newton meters. And now, my wonderful students, I want you to exercise your super powers that every one of you's got since you were a little teeny baby your visual perception what do you see that is nice nifty excellente in this second equation block what do you see? Cancel out those Newtons. Yep. Ding. Or you can cancel them out here. You know, get delta x by itself. And here you cancel them. You know, on the, the second equation block, you cancel left and right. And this one, this third equation block, you cancel top and bottom. You know, if you're taking stellar astrophysics, I mean, it's one thing. You got to calculate stuff. A lot trickier than this. But I mean, if you know you're doing a stopping distance, you know that's that's how you do it. And now you and, and you know what else you can calculate? Uh, you can cancel. What else can you cancel? The minus signs. Yeah. All right. So you have so this this way. Um, your choice of coordinate system would be would result in a correct value for delta x as long as you make this the sign of your friction opposite the direction of your motion so if your delta x your displacement is positive you got to make your friction negative all right so now you just calculate question Yeah, if delta x was leftward, my friction force would be rightward, so I'd have positive, and I'd have a negative divided by a positive, that's negative, and my delta x is negative, it's leftward, so that, you know, it's all consistent, right? It just so happens that I like to have stuff arranged so that my motion is to the right, but, but really, you know, those guys in hidden figures, they're working three dimensions, you know, they're, they have to handle negatives and positives and, you know, ups and downs and, you know. But, I mean, it, it, it's all consistent if you're really careful. Okay. 
All right, another question. Calculation. Anybody verify me on that? 27.06, I don't know, 6.457 or something like that. All right. Now, in, um, in the, uh, what you call it, the, uh, the homework, I asked you to give me the number, the distance to the nearest 0 0.1 meters. So then this answer would be 27.1. You know, when you type it in. All right. So here's what, here's where I'm going to bring it all together. And I want you to think carefully about this. Don't let the pizza distract you. See that picture? One of my favorites. We have an impulse formula. That's the one on the right. F delta T equals delta P. We have a work formula. That's the one on the, excuse me, F delta T equals delta P. That's on the left. On the right, F delta X equals delta KE. The change of the kinetic energy. That's on the right. And my admonition to you is this. Normally, if you have a stopping time problem, impulse formula is usually easiest to start with. If you have a stopping distance formula, Usually the work for, uh, excuse me, stopping distance problem, usually the work formula is the easier one to start with, all right? And we just worked out the brain burner from homework six using kinetic energy. Now you can use the distance triangle. I showed you how to do it, you know, and it's, it's kosher. Everything worked out good for that. We, we did it that way. Uh, but this way, is, I think it's a little bit easier, especially if it's a stopping distance. Now, if, if I tell you that I want to drain off 100 joules out of 500, okay, so if I want to dip my, my kinetic energy, you know, like for uh, a freight train from 500 million joules to 400 million joules, and I tell you how, long, how, how much distance that will take um, and how much force it's going to take, I'd still want to use F delta X equals delta K E. I mean, that's, that's a lot of kinetic energy for those babies. Uh, but stopping distance, it, that's not a stopping problem. From 500 million joules to 400 million joules, that's, it's still in motion at the end of your calculation. But you could still use this formula to figure out the distance, the slowdown distance. The stopping distance is particularly easy, right? And that's the one. Now, exam two, most semesters, these two calculations are the feature calculations. Most semesters, my second midterm, stopping distance, stopping time calculations are the feature calculations. In other words, they're kind of like landmarks. I want to know that you can do both. Now you might have a stopping distance in the multiple choice of exam two and a stopping time 
in the clicker part. Or you might have vice versa. Or you might have stopping distance and stopping time in the clicking. Right? It just depends on you know, what I feel like doing for the test. There's a whole lot of variation. But these are the benchmarks. If you know how to do this, if you can handle these, which I'm starting to feel you guys are, are getting a little bit more solid. That's good. Uh, then you can say, and I can say, yeah, they're doing, they're getting it. They can handle it. Now, second comment. Boxcar problem for us was a momentum calculation, conservation of momentum. Could you turn that, a boxcar problem, into a stopping time or a stopping distance problem? And the answer is YES. And that would make it a brain burner from another planet. That fry all brains on, the, on our planet with that kind of a problem. All right, yeah, so we could do that. So by the same token, you know, the classic problem for us that we're going to work on next week and that you'll have to study is the uh, basketball energy levels. And I'll give you some more of that in homework this weekend. All right, we'll try to work a little bit more deeply into the basketball energy level tables. I, th I think I'll make a new one uh, with a little bit more accurate energy levels and stuff. Um, but here's what, here's what would be interesting. Given the energy levels, what's the, what's the drop time? You know, that's, that's not a stop time, stopping time. It's a, it's a dropping time, but it's, but you know, for free fall, you know, the amount of time going up is the amount of time coming back down. So, you know, so I could make a brain burner, a really tough brain burner out of that. Now, you're going to be working on those. And I'm going to be giving you Tuesday night a study problem set, a, a, a workout to get ready for exam two with a really big set of calculations for energy, all right? And you're gonna, it's gonna really push you, all right? So my suggestion to you is, if you can sit up straight in your chair and not fall asleep, good. What I want you to do is make sure that you have found a study partner, if at all possible, Okay. Oh, and also, Miss Darian, good. Let me reemphasize. Darian has office. She's your number one study partner. I mean, she's awesome to study with. And she has office hours in the physical sciences building, just right there in the atrium, right by the main entrance, tomorrow, 11 to 12. Interesting. And then... By special appointment, by King Nitro the First, she also has special office hours. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, ten thirty to eleven thirty. Tuesday, ten thirty to eleven thirty. That's right, pretty much right before this class, yeah. right? Okay. So, and that's going to be in the atrium, physical sciences building. And I will be over here. I won't be over there. So you guys will, you know, kind of troop together over here as a big, you probably have a lot of, and you'll have uh, plenty of stuff to talk about Tuesday morning. And uh, so if you can't make it to her Friday, see if you can make it to Tuesday morning. All right. And the more the merrier. It might get a little bodacious, but um, uh, you'll, you'll benefit from it. Question. Yeah, uh, every exam, the formulas that you need 
will be either given to you directly in the question. You know, like, so, like number 27 might have the momentum definition in it. And if not, it'll be in the matching first three or four questions, four or five questions, just like last time. All right. Now, we're going to dismiss early, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Uh, come on up to the front if you want to ask last-minute questions. You're dismissed. <laughs>